We'll do a little bit more practice with balancing chemical reactions and also introduce a type of chemical reaction that will show up a lot um, uh, and that is very important in, in life, um, in the world around us. And that is the idea of a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction is uh, something where we're, we're burning something. And in particular, we're generally looking at something containing carbon plus hydrogen. We call these hydrocarbons because they contain hydrogen, hydrogen and carbon. Um, reacting with oxygen gas. And as a reminder, oxygen is one of those that always forms diatomic species. And the products of a combustion reaction, if it goes to completion, it's more complicated than this, but, but to a first approximation, the products of combustion reactions are carbon dioxide gas and water. Uh, depending on how hot it is, the water will either be a liquid or a gas. We'll write it as a liquid here. And so this is a general type of, this is like a, a, a motif, you might say, uh, for type of reaction that's pretty common. And this is the type of reaction that powers all of our internal combustion engines uh, and a lot of our heating and things like that. As we use hydrocarbons, we burn them in the presence of the oxygen that's in the atmosphere and it produces carbon dioxide and water. This of course is uh, what is driving global warming, is that we use these combustion reactions for so many things in our society and we are producing a lot of carbon dioxide in the, in the process. And that carbon dioxide uh, makes it out to the atmosphere and there's an imbalance between how much carbon dioxide we produce as, a, as humans around the, the whole globe and how much carbon dioxide is taken up um, naturally uh, by plants as they uh, you do photosynthesis. So this is a very relevant type of reaction uh, for the world we live in for various reasons. Anyway, let's practice balancing some combustion reactions. So we'll go ahead and do um, the combustion reaction. Let's do the hydrocarbon um, propane. So this is a common hydrocarbon that's used in camping stoves and things like that. Uh, so propane has a formula. This I don't expect you to know, which is why I'm telling you. Uh, of C3H8 has three carbons and eight hydrogens. The naming for this does not follow the nomenclature we've learned so far. This follows uh, organic chemistry nomenclature. So. Um, you can read about that in your textbook. I'm not going to be um, testing you on it or giving you homework questions about it. Okay, but let's let's write a balanced chemical equation for the combustion of propane. So combustion means we know what the product, the, the reactants are. The reactants are propane, and propane is a liquid at room temperature. That just happened to know off the top of my head. Um, reacting with O2 gas. We know that that's going to be our other reactant because that's what makes it a combustion reaction. And we know what our products are. CO2 gas, H2O liquid. Let me give myself some space. So let's see, is this already balanced? So let's just count up our number of elements on either side. Uh, so if we're looking on the, pro the reactant side, we have three carbons, uh, we have eight hydrogens, and we have two oxygens. And on the product side, we have one carbon, we have two oxygens, oh, well, let me do these in the same order. Uh, we have two hydrogens, sorry, and three oxygens. Okay, so now we have something where th uh, none of these are balanced yet. So this is a good time to, to get an example with this. So what should we start with? Well, the easiest thing to do is to pick something that's only in one of the products and one of the reactants. So carbon's a good choice because carbon only appears in the propane and the carbon dioxide. So let's start by balancing those. Uh, and so this, this, uh, the coefficient we can add is three here, right? And so now this changes to three carbons and we change the number of oxygens. We have uh, seven. Three times two is six plus one. So now we have seven oxygens. Okay. So we've taken care of the carbon. The carbon is balanced, but our oxygen still isn't balanced and our hydrogen still isn't balanced. Now hydrogen's another good one to choose because it only shows up in propane. Oh, you can't really see that blue very well. Let's pick a different color. Uh, how about yellow? All right, hydrogen shows up here and in water. So let's balance that next. Okay, so we've got eight hydrogens on the reactant side, but only two on the product side. So we need to add a four here so that we have eight hydrogens 
on this side. Okay, we don't need to do anything on the reactant side. So now let's uh, reassess our number of oxygens. Carbon hasn't changed. Uh, so oxygen is now uh, 6 plus 4, 10 oxygens. Okay, we're close. Our carbon and hydrogen are balanced, but our oxygen still isn't. But thankfully, oxygen only shows up on the reactant side as O2, and so we can just add a 5 here, and we get a balanced chemical equation, because we now have 10 oxygens. All right, and we can just double check. It's nice to do that after you think you have a balanced chemical equation, is just recheck everything. Uh, all right, so we've got 3 carbons, 3 carbons, 8 hydrogens, 8 hydrogens, 10 oxygens, 3 plus 2, 3 times 2 is 6, plus 4, so we're good. And so this is a, a balanced combustion reaction uh, and an, an example of, of how we can approach something where thing, you know, we have multiple things to balance all at once. It sometimes is an iterative process like this.